Welcome to Haunt Topic Radio, the podcast for haunters by haunters. These are our scary visions. You hit record. Testing. Say up, yep. I'm here with Maximus at the Transworld Halloween and Trade Show, and it's about to get crazy. So what do you think of the show so far? This is this is crazy. I mean, honestly, just walking in and looking left and right and up and down everything, there's I there's I feel a little overwhelmed at the moment with how much is in here, but it's really cool though. So yeah. cool here. Kind of brings me back brings me back to my when I was uh, my first time here, man. I was just like, oh my god. I think I, I think it probably took me like three days to get through this whole floor. Now everything's kind of spaced out. So it's a lot different. There's a lot more room. It takes a little bit longer to get to places too. So. Yeah. Well, that. I mean, it's. I've been here about three hours, and I think I'm only about a fourth of the way through the floor. I haven't even looked at the Christmas side yet. I don't even know if I'm going to get to it. But there's just been so many cool vendors to see so far, and really cool stuff. That, like, I was in the dark room, and all the giant props they got in there. It's just nuts. I'm. I'm in Halloween Wonderland, I feel like, right now. Wow. Just got back from the Transworld Halloween and Attraction Show. And man, was it a blast. I mean, everyone there has been trapped up in the house. No place to go. We know some events are starting to open up. But this was like a lot of people. Transworld did a good job. They, everything, The aisles were spaced out, which made everything to me better because people could actually see the booths they could take their time walking down the aisle they weren't crowded um and then you know then when people were interested like i ran scare badges booth and when people were interested they kind of came in your bubble so you could actually interact with them without a bunch of people around them so i think the show overall did was uh was put together well uh the scare badges did really good we got more recognition we sold some orders and we have big plans for this year, so follow us on Facebook, and we're releasing new stuff, and go to scarebadges.com. I want to also thank my brother and Sarah, his girlfriend, and they helped me set up the booth, and they helped me fill orders for Scare Badges. We took all of our stuff there, all of our inventory, and they really helped me out. I could have done it without them. I want to also uh, plug Max, Maximus Bryant. He's the one that put this podcast together. So he did all the, well, I did all the editing, but he went through Transworld. It was his first time at Transworld. He's been a haunter for years, but this is his first time at Transworld. So to get his reaction, he went around and interviewed, I think, nine people, which you'll hear inside this podcast because I didn't have time. And I almost think Max did it better than me, but don't tell him that. It was good to see friends. I saw friends. I met some new people, hung out at the Marriott, explored some local eateries, some little holes in the wall that were excellent food, and ready to go. Excited about 21, what my haunt has in store for it, what Scare Badges has in store. Um, we also might as well go ahead and release it here. Haunter's Toolbox has partnered with the Haunted Attraction Association. So if you're a member of the Haunted Attraction Association, stay tuned. There's going to be some talk about Haunter's Toolbox having access for the the members of the Haunted Attraction Association. So there's some deals going on on over there as well. Well, I want you guys to soak up the show. So if you weren't there, if you were there, maybe these vendors you didn't get to see. Max does a great job. So sit back, relax, and take in some Transworld Halloween Attraction Show 20. 21. Hey everyone, Maximus here. I was walking around the show floor and then I remembered I had a class to go to. And then I went to the class. It was Q line acting. It was fantastic. But I ran into another fellow actor. Another fellow um, who I think should be a Q line actor, John Morin from Brimstone Haunt. How are you, John? It's actually pronounced Moran, not Morin. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> you said Morin. Whatever. <laughs> I apologize. I've known him for like three years now, and now he's going to be mad that I said it that way. But anyhow, so uh, we just got out of the Q-Line acting class. How did you, how did you enjoy that? 
I, I loved it. I, it kind of got me inspired to Q-Line Act, honestly. I'm pumped. I'm ready to do this now. Let's go. <laughs> really? Because I feel like I've made this argument to you before that you should be a Q-Line actor. So can you tell us about your character? Yes, I... I play the boogeyman at the Brimstone Haunt. So there's plenty of ideas that can go off of scaring all the little titties in the line. <laughs> See, knowing you myself, I know that you really get into your characters. So, you know, the fact that you're not out front interacting with them, to me, is a robbery. You know what I mean? Like, you should be out there acting with them. So, from this class that we just saw with Alan Hobbs, do you feel like you're more ready maybe to take on that challenge? I am. And one of the things he said was, like, um, he said, like, different prop an hour, which is something... I love playing with props. There's, there's, there's fun. So if like, you know, for the first hour I have like a bungee head, you know, I could, you know, toss and people going, heads up, you know, something like that, you know, I can do that for the first hour. Then the second hour I could bust out a couple knives. I can shing, shing, you know, next to people. So yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to do this this year. Let's do it. I think so too. I mean, it, it was pretty <laughs> inspirational. So, you know, with this being a trade show, you know, there's big giant props that haunt owners and such can buy and everything. As an actor, what are some things you might be looking Looking for on the trade show floor? I'm looking for just little handheld props that I can interact with the guests with. Uh, like I said, there's a couple of prop knives in there I was looking at that I thought would be amazing. And uh, there's a bungee head that I think would be fun. So maybe not the big old animatronics, but just little things that I can carry around with me. I even saw a little retractable syringe needle knife that freaked me out when I saw it. I, th I thought my friend got stuck with a real needle, but when I learned it was fake, I was like, what in the world? I want one now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of the cool thing about walking around the floors. You see a lot of stuff, and then you get ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you are you completely in control of your character and like the look and and it's and the props and or toys. Like, are you completely in charge of kind of figuring out what all your character has? I am actually. The Boogeyman was just kind of like my concept. I came up with you know originally I played Michael Myers. And then when we got rid of movie characters, I was like, well, that's not, what would happen if I took the base layer of Michael Myers? I added a little bit of Freddy Krueger, a little bit of Creep Keeper, and I just kind of all, and a little bit of Pennywise, and that's kind of where I developed the character. So, yeah, the look, uh, the props, I make my own props most of the time, so it's all 100% me. Well, so basically, hopefully you're able to walk around the floor and see a lot of maybe new toys that you can get. So what are some other stuff that you might be working on in the off season uh, leading up to this? I mean, leading up to this coming season, are you doing any character prep or maybe any other trips or are you working on scenes? Um, right now, usually I would work on a scene, but since I'm transitioning to cue line acting, I'm not going to be working on my scene so much. So usually I'd, I would build props that I would like hang from like the walls in my scene or something. But this year, it's going to be all probably costume updates or just any, if I'm making any props, it's something I can carry with me. That sounds great. Well, it sounds to me like you have a lot of stuff uh, coming up. And like I said, you should be in the queue line. So um, do you want to do any kind of shameless plugs for Brimstone and anything like that? Um, just look us up on Facebook, Brimstone Haunt. Um, that's and where are you located? We are um, in Harveysburg, I believe. It's like Har on the board of Harveysburg and Wilmington. Uh, it's right, right behind the Ohio Renaissance Festival. Oh, a haunt right at the Renaissance Festival? Sounds fantastic. John, thank you so much for speaking with me. You're very welcome, Max. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maximus here on the show floor at Transworld, and I am speaking to Vic from Creature Core. Vic, how are you today? Good, man. Transworld, we're here. We love it. Uh, it this is this is a big show, but you know what? What is also big is this setup that you have here. I mean, I'm looking at some pretty cool props here, especially this uh, Frankenstein. I'm looking at this guy looks dangerous to me. Yeah, he's a giant, morbid. Uberstein is what we call him. Big fist, big chest, and big something else if you look there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a beast for sure. I saw him, and he, he, he's pretty aggressive when he comes out yeah. and everything. So, now, Creature Core, what, um, what are the main things that uh, Creature Core does and makes? The main thing we make are foam latex masks. Uh, we've got a creeping deadline, and we've got a doll mask. We've got a brand-new goat this year that we did that's been really great. Uh, we got a Dr. Satan looking guy who's uh, pretty cool and this new demon, uh, but mostly mass foam latex. They're great, they're light, they fit really well, they breathe really well, and you can, 
you know, really go a long time in them without, you know, overheating. And I, I know about overheating. I wear uh, some of those silicone masks, and in September that can be pretty rough. So foam latex sounds like it might be a pretty good alternative to that. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, the latex or the the silicone masks are beautiful. We have them at our haunt. I mean, I love them. Um, we just wanted to come up with something a little more light that could, you know, you could wear just for a longer stretch of time. A lot of my actors in our haunt will go a long time in our masks without needing to break longer, I should say. Yeah. Um, and they still look amazing. You know, we got a lot of great, talented artists that uh, do our sculpting and everything. So we're really, really happy with them. I think that they that everything I'm looking at looks really cool and it has such a unique look to it to where I I mean I love all the big stuff that you made too. I think a couple years ago I saw like a big jack in the box yep. type prop and yep. that thing was really cool too. So everything you make just seems wonderful. I'm eyeballing also that uh, that popcorn machine over there with the head in it. It seems like that would fit a carnival clown scene really well. Yeah, it would. That's uh, why we made it, but that one sold already, buddy. So oh. sorry. <laughs> well, it sounds here that they're selling pretty well. And uh, you, so uh, where can the people find out more about Creature Core? Uh, well, obviously we're at booth 903 all weekend, so come down to 903 here at Transworld. Um, but if you can't make it, then go to CreatureCoreLLC.com, and that we'll have. There's a catalog on that website there. You can download it or just you know view everything on the website. Of course, we're on Facebook um, and Instagram as well. I do. Uh, do you have uh, the time to make things before the beginning of this coming haunt season? It's getting close. Oh. Yeah. So you need to get in there quick. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gonna, we got a lot here, but if you're gonna order, we we need orders soon. So just to make sure we get them to you, because we're filling up fast. Well, Creature Core, it looks amazing. You guys need to get your orders in real quick. And Vic, thank you so much for speaking with me, and good luck for the rest of the show. Always a pleasure seeing you, Maximus. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Maximus here again on the show floor, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Alex from Masquerade. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm great. Am I saying it right? Mask R A Masquerade? Yes, that's exactly how you say it, with the aid at the end. Yes. And um, I think the what we're talking about today is, you know, an item that really helps... Uh, people with uh, their mask wearing. Uh, so, how did Masquerade get started, and you know what's sort of the backstory to it? So, my dad was sitting drinking on the beach, <laughs> and my mom was going through a magazine, and he was not interested. So, he was sitting there, and he thought, you know, masks just aren't comfortable. You know, they just don't work. And so, he got to thinking, you know, how could we make it better? And he started drawing out a design with his hand, you know, in the sand. And he thought, well, we could use foam, but foam won't work because it's hot and it's uncomfortable. And so, you know, we just got trying to think what would work. And here we are with what we have now. <laughs> this is a, a propri proprietary product that I haven't seen before. And it's an idea, though, that I believe is uh, necessary because when I first started working at a haunt, they gave me this extremely hard mask and I had to wear it for many hours. And I remember at the end of each night just hurting. And sometimes they would put like makeup sponges in it to try to help, but those didn't stay. So uh, I really like the idea. So, you know, what um, have you been, uh, how have you felt like the response has been at the show so far this weekend? So we've had a really great response. Um, you know, actors especially come in and like you said, the masks are hard, they're uncomfortable, like you sweat and the sweat goes in your eyes, it burns your eyes. And with our product, you know, it creates a custom comfort fit that gives you airflow, breathability, line of sight especially, and it won't uh, hold moisture. So the sweat won't go into your eyes, it'll go down and out of your mask. And um, they stay in place, uh, you know, point blank, they're, they're comfortable. They make masks wearable. I don't think there's anything to argue with here. There's, there's comfort, sweat doesn't go in your eyes. I mean, I really wish I knew about this like many years ago. <laughs> so, um, so, is the, so this will work on hard masks. It, um, if you have a silicone mask, is this recommended for it? 
So we recommend anything besides silicone just because silicone is made specifically to be tight up against your skin. So. Right, yeah, if, yeah. this wouldn't necessarily work inside of silicone, but inside of pretty much everything else. Yes, anything you, else. So yeah. We do have some people that wear silicone masks that just slide it in between to use as a buffer, but it doesn't hold, it doesn't stick to the silicone. Well, if it helps get uh, sweat where it needs to go, that would also be pretty beneficial. This, I mean, I really feel like all of you should try to look up Masquerade, see the product, and really consider it for um, wearing it as a mask to make it more comfortable and breathable and everything. So where can people find out more about Masquerade? So you can check out Masquerade at www.masquerade.com. That's M-A-S-K-R-A-I-D. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at masquerade.liners. And, you know, we also have them for retail. We have a lot of um, Halloween stores that sell them as well. So you can find them at Halloween stores and find them at their website. This is a fantastic product. I really think that people need to go check this out. Alex, thank you so much for speaking with me today, and I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the show. Thank you so much. Come by and check us out. <laughs> hey, everyone. Maximus here from the show floor at Transworld, and I am speaking to a personal favorite vendor of mine, Chris from Polaris Breach FX. Chris, how are you today? Doing real good. Thank you very much for stopping by, man. Absolutely. Now, there's a tons of reasons why you're one of my favorites, because I have several of your masks, and I love them. Mm -hmm. um, so, can you tell us about Polaris Breach Effects? Sure. Polaris Breach Effects is a mask that, or a company that focuses on thermoplastic masks, face plates, and I also do some uh, full costumes on consignment. But mainly, my masks are really unique in the sense that I use black light paint in pretty much all of them. Um, they're based on things that I loved as a kid growing up, so like I was a big fan of the alien xenomorph So there's designs that have that aspect. I was a big spawn comic fan So there's spawn inspired designs, but also just things from my own Wacky consciousness all the different wacky stuff. I can come up with I have shark monsters. I got Insects with cybernetic things coming out of their head, you know, just anything I can come up with I love to just make into a mask. It's sort of an obsession I'd say so, and not only that, you're able to combine, yeah. like so many different themes and everything. And you know, one of my one of your types of masks that really called out to me was your clown masks. Yes. That I don't think that's your main focus. It's just no. the one that I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's basically clowns. Are, there's so many clowns everywhere, and I love clowns. But I wanted to play around with different tropes. So my to, to fill the void of clowns in my masks, I do what's called tunes. And they're basically demented Roger Rabbit tunes. Um, and some of the designs of the clowns get transferred to those instead. But when I do do clowns, I like to add burlap to them to give them like a nice texture and give them that weird sort of gritty look like the ones you have. Yes, I, I really enjoy it because it, to me it was like, I don't know, M M Mad Max, Wasteland, yeah. Borderland, mixed with the Purge. Yeah. I, had a, I had a friend come in and said my style's very, what was it, graffiti style? Like a graffiti style. Like a, an urban, but yet and bright, but yet gritty and dark at the same time. It's kind. Of, I just, I absolutely love doing it. I, I really enjoy seeing them. And one of the great things about you as well is that I've been able to contact you and get custom orders before. Absolutely. Uh, one of my biggest things that I love doing is custom orders. I was always scared when I got into this business that I would be making the same mask over and over again, but it never really happened. People, when they find out I'll do custom stuff, people flock to me like, oh, whoa, can you can you make that mouth with those eyes with that horn? And it's like, yeah, that's no problem. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, I mean, anything I wanted, you delivered, yeah. and you delivered so well. And anybody who sees my mask always tells me, wow, yeah. that is awesome and unique because... You, I mean, look, I'm not bashing the, the bald-headed bald -headed clowns and everything like that, but, you know, you got to spice things up a little bit. Right, right. And just, like, a lot of people recently really seem to like that idea of the clown, but the dirty, drudged, scummy clown. And by, you know, by adding the burlap to it and making them look, like you said, very wastelandy Mad Max, that sort of delivers that, that look that they're after. 
I mean, you got this look going where some of them are mechanical, but some of them are, you know, fleshy, giant teeth, all kinds of stuff. It looks amazing, and it's amazing to see how it's developed over the years and everything. How long have you been doing this now? I, well, I started, I started art as a stone carver about nine years ago, and I was like, this is too tedious and too hard on my body. So I was born on Halloween, so I always loved doing masks, and I was like, you know what, let's give it a try. So I started with uh, duct tape masks, and then I worked my way to a material, a thermal plastic material, and, but it's been a total of seven years of progressing my mask making talents to where they are now. They look amazing. Look, everybody out there, I know this is a audio podcast. Visually, you need to see what is available here at Polaris Breach FX. Where can people see like some of the designs you got and maybe get inspired for getting one themselves? Oh, absolutely. You can check out my Facebook business page. It's Polaris Breach FX. Breach and FX is one word. You can go there. You can see all my designs from the past. If there's something from the past that you like, I can remake it for you or we can tweak it to make it more original for you. Um, and just send me a message and we can work stuff out. Reasonably priced too. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw that out there as a as a as a customer myself. Yes, so, so thank you so much, Chris, for speaking with me. No I problem. wish you the best of luck for the rest of the show. Yeah, thank you. And check out Polaris Breach FX. Hell yeah! Thanks again. This podcast episode sponsored by Scarret Badges. We always were looking for ideas to to get those actors to take it to the next level i really want to do something that they can use more than just a meal or they can use more than just a that a boy that a girl they love this stuff but it's not really promoting a haunter and then i sit down scarab badges comes out that's when i realized this is amazing because not only is it giving them an attaboy but it's also promoting them all year round and for to promote somebody to give somebody accolades all year round and have them be able to wear it on their shoulder with pride means a lot this right here says this is who nailed it on this day in this year for the rest of their life for the rest of their haunting life and that's what i really love about this product is you're able to give haunting to somebody an attaboy 365 days a year and that's so hats off to you guys i think this is a great product and i wish you the best of luck because it's awesome Get your scare badges at scarebadges.com. Maximus here from the show floor of Trans World Day 3. Now, one thing that I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but I am a first time attendee this year. And I'm here with another first time attendee, Mia Demery from an a Grim Trails actress. You're also a first year attendee, yes? Yes, first year attendee for Transworld. So tell me, the moment you walked into the show floor, what was that moment like for you? Um, it's honestly euphoric. I've been wanting to be here for a long time and walking in and the fog is going and you can hear the animatronics going. It is really just a lot to take in and it was just awesome to walk in like that. It is pretty awesome and it's loud. It's so loud, it's so loud. <laughs> But it's not it's not bad loud. So tell me, like, um, what do you? I think this is fair to ask. What is the coolest thing that you think you've seen so far? Definitely the makeups that they do live are insane, and just the different types of how everybody does things differently. And that's I can definitely tell when I walk by. So you're really interested in the makeup stuff and all that. I like makeup stuff i'm more interested in like um the animatronics they really interest me a lot i'm not a makeup person <laughs> um, but i do like the costumes and the animatronics a lot i love seeing the animatronics too i like looking at things i can't afford it's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah, so. Me too. so being an actress at the haunt you know uh obviously courtney and michael have dragged you along this weekend <laughs> do do you feel like uh that they're looking for your input on some things or was it for you to just see the show for the first time? I think it was a little bit of both. Um, I'm definitely an actress that isn't gonna go anywhere. I've made Grim, Grim Trails my home haunt. I'm not going anywhere else. I love what we do here. Um, they're definitely taking my input into things for scenes and things like that. And I do get scared a lot. So they love to take me to places like other haunted houses because I give a natural reaction. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely think they're they're taking my input into account. There is no shame in being scared of other haunts. I get scared, especially if they come at me with chainsaws, so I get it. 
That's wonderful. So I think that that's fantastic that they brought you along. Um, so how was this last haunt season for you? Did you get to uh, did you get to perform? I performed every night. Um, I went down one. It a heat stroke uh, got me pretty bad. Um, we were busy, busy, busy. I don't think we had a slow night. Um, it was crazy. I got injured a couple times, but we all do. Um, I, it was honestly the best season that I've been there so far. Yes. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It was such a great season. So based on what you've seen here on the show floor, has any kind of idea sparked for you? Maybe for a costume, maybe for character development? Has, have you been inspired in any particular way by what you've seen on the show floor, perhaps? Oh, definitely. Um, I'm definitely wanting to get into more creature acting and I'm definitely seeing some masks and some things that I can definitely take into account and to work on my character more and to make it more original and not just a vampire. That's wonderful. I really look forward to seeing what that looks like. Make sure that you post on social media. But again, where is it that if people want to see Mia Demery perform, where can they go this coming haunt season? <laughs> Grim Trails in Louisville, Kentucky. And are they on social medias and websites? Yes, they are. They are on Instagram, uh, Facebook. We don't have a TikTok. Grim Trails is on TikTok? We have it. We haven't started making videos. That's something I'm trying to help them with in the future. So, so check out Grim Trails' TikTok. You can find it. I've personally visited. I think they what they do is fantastic. It's a wonderful theme. So... Yeah, and, oh, are we announcing that? Oh, it's announced. Grim Trails is changing location. So follow all the websites and social medias to learn more about that. Mia, thank you so much for talking with me. It's comforting talking with another first-time attendee because this has also been a lot to take in for me as well. So I hope you are having tons of fun. Oh, I'm having tons of fun. I love conventions. I cosplay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. We'll see you. Hey everyone, Maximus here on the Trans World floor, and I am talking with a haunt owner today of a pretty brand new haunt. I'm here with Fred Hearn from Hell's Dungeon. Fred, how are you? I'm doing great, Maximus. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, I am fantastic. So the first thing I think that we want to know, Hell's Dungeon in Dayton, Ohio, opened up for the first time this last year. Tell us about it. How did this season, how was your debut year? How'd it go? You know, as a Han owner, you always want more, but we ran we ran about 1,500 through in, in five weeks. We got opened up late. Uh, of course, you know the struggles. We had talked about that before, about getting in with the city. Uh, we had a month to build a, a 18,000 square foot Han, and, and we rocked it, and we had a number of great reviews. Uh, very excited. We're on, we can only go up. We're no longer a new haunt, so now we, we got to step our game up, and that's what we're doing this year. We're expanding, adding in a, uh, two new sections and about another 8,000 square foot to go along. So we're going to have a total of about 25,000 active square foot for our haunt this year. What's that? Indoors. Indoors. I, I just say that I got to do a few walkthroughs in, in intermittent time frames to see the progress as it went. That's already a pretty long haunt, so you're already you're going to make it even bigger. Yes, we're having a lot more interaction too. We're looking at uh, can't give it all away, but we're looking at adding a laser tag type theme. You got to fight through hell to get to the dungeon, so it's going to be a little bit more interactive at the beginning. Uh, probably, like I said, ten to fifteen minutes, some type of a laser tag show that we're going to have. So that sounds really fun. So here at Trans World, what does what does a, a relatively new haunt you know, are, is there anything in particular you might be looking for or in general, like, are, are you here for the eye candy or did you come in with a strategy? Well, this year is really, this is my fourth year coming, so we've seen a lot of it. Uh, and But this year is more about my team coming in. You've met my team, you know how we are about our family at the haunt. Uh, so I wanted to bring them in. There, uh, a lot of my people, my managers are home haunts, or home haunters that come over with me and has brought just uh, so much knowledge to me that I had to bring them up here to show them what it was about. So really my strategy is to let them go out and see what they can do to better me. I write the checks, they do everything else. So we're looking at makeup, we're looking at ideals for our rooms, 
uh, and and Sunday is what I'm looking for to see what I can get my best deal on because I'm a cheap buck. After after hearing what you just said, I'm glad that we're airing this after the show's closed because you just told them <laughs> you'll write the checks. They just yeah, need to bring true. it. That's true. Uh, yeah. My, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. I, I think they were out of earshot, so I yeah, think you're yeah, safe. No, I'm good. But no, this, this show the. This year is not what it used to be, but it's still the best show that you can come to as a Han owner, as a Han enthusiast, and uh, St. Louis does a great job putting it on as well. So, so if, if you brought your team in, can I ask, are you doing like daily meetings? Or are you going to meet up with them afterwards? Like, what's when are you kind of when are you kind of putting your heads together and uh, discussing things? Uh, a little bit throughout the day. We meet up throughout the day. Uh, you know, I told them, hey, I'm on vacation. You all go do your thing. I'm going to do mine. But we meet up and talk and see. Uh, if they see a good deal, they'll call me up. Hey, you know, like yesterday, we got, I don't know, $250 worth of makeup for 100 bucks. And they called me and said, hey, we need it. I said, get it, you know. So we do meet up and talk throughout the day. And, and like they're going to the werewolf ball tonight, you know, like I said, trying to build a little bit of teamwork in with everything with my team. I think that that's fantastic that, you know, you as a haunt owner can find a lot of cool stuff to get for the haunt, but using it in such a way as a, as team building, I think that's really fantastic to hear, and I hope that your staff appreciate you for it. I they mean, better. They better. The hell they put me through to get here, they better. You hear that, Kenny and Miranda? You better appreciate me. <laughs> I bet they do appreciate you. So, uh, so as far as this coming season going, you're – Plan on opening everything? Do you? What are you thinking? October, maybe part of September? Well, the the way I've got it figured out, we're trying to open up the weekend after Memorial. Uh, yeah, no, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. They're in uh, September. I think we're shooting for the tenth to open up. Uh, a lot's going to depend on working with the city, getting our permits. You know, being indoors, we've got a lot more different safety criteria and inspections that we got to go through. So we're shooting to get our uh, our, our permits by August first. That way, we can open up the tenth and and get more practice in. Get more practice in. That's the big thing. So Hell's Dungeon in Dayton, Ohio, you can check out their uh, potential opening date maybe after Labor Day there. But I, I have this question, yes. and I don't think I ever asked you this, uh, because you and I talk on, on the side and we message each other and everything. The biggest lesson that you learned about being a haunt owner after your first season, what like what is the thing that is sticking with you that you learned and – you know, what is the big lesson after your first season, basically? Well, this year, as you know, we had the struggles of trying to open up during the pandemic. You know, like I said, we're a brand new haunt. We got our keys at the end of April. We had a we, we had a complete empty hall room. Uh, we, we ran over 15,000 linear foot of studs, 800 sheets of drywall. Uh, th there's just so much that I learned, you know, uh, because you could go in with a game plan, but in this pandemic, the way things changed, you, you can never really keep to that game plan. So you, with it, always being prepared to change, how's that? Adapt yeah. to the situation. That that was what we had learned. You got to learn how to adapt to everything. Because if you if you get a plan and you think you're going to stick with it, especially in this day and age, things change with the health department, the fire department, you know, and all that stuff. I think honestly, that is the theme for haunts in general. You know, if there was a group of people that I think knew how to adapt to the COVID situation, it was haunted house people. Yeah. And you opening in the season of COVID, you know, I, I don't know many others that have done this. I don't I don't talk to anybody else has done. Yeah. So I wanted to offer you a big congratulations on your first season. I'm so glad to see you and your yes, crew sir. here. Yes, um, where can people learn more about Hell's Dungeon? Well, we do have our Facebook page. Uh, we're, we, we've got our website, uh, the website we're working on. Uh, we, we, like I said, that was one of the last things that got put up was our website and kept up. But really our Facebook, we're, we're giving away tickets right now. We're giving away T-shirts. We're trying to do the best we can to get our name out because not only are we there for the haunted house industry, we're there for the community. You know, I've talked to you about that, uh, what we like to try to do. We have a, a nonprofit that we work with every Friday. You know, last mm -hmm. year I think we gave them seven 55 gallon trash bag fulls of new unwrapped toys so that that really supplied a lot for the kids this year and the struggles and stuff that they had at christmas we've also adopted a family and we raised over two thousand dollars for a little girl in a wheelchair uh, for her medical expenses and stuff like that so to me it's not just about the hunt it's about building working with the community being retired out of the air force i learned that you know without your community you're nothing so we want our community to embrace us as much as we embrace our community so that's people people love that 
there is so much there. And so from what I'll take from that, thank you for giving so much back to your community. Thank you for your service. And have fun for the rest of the trans world. Brother, you know it. Hey, just come on out and see us. Like us on Facebook and share us and get us some more followers. Uh, we're, we're happy to talk about it. I'm not scared. Anybody can come and look at my haunt anytime. I love to show it off. So, you know, you've been there. A lot of people are like, oh, no, don't show off your haunt before you open. I'm not that way. I went, like, you've come out, you've promoted us, you've helped us out a lot. So a lot of those people that come in the door had heard it through you. So we, as Hell's Dungeon, we greatly appreciate you as well. Oh, thank you so much. Well, now that I'm blushing, I'm going to step away. So take it easy. Thank you. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maximus here on the show floor at Transworld, and I have the distinct pleasure to talk with Ray from Frankenfab. Ray, how are you today? Just fine, how are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. So, wh was this your uh, first time at Transworld? Oh no, I've, uh, I've been coming to Transworld probably since its inception. But um, doing other things, uh, working with a lot of the haunts, it's been kind of hard the last few years um, to just do just my stuff. So... Last year, um, Haunted Enterprises, I've been with Randy for quite a few years with Haunted Enterprises, and he's helped me uh, with my booth with him. And this year, I uh, kind of got uh, where I said, well, I'm kind of retiring, so I'm going to do just the Transworld show every year. So uh, I uh, got with Rich, got my booth that I've been trying to get for five years <laughs> with this location, and uh, finally got the location that I wanted here at Transworld, and here we are. So today we're on the last day of Transworld for those that are uh, just a time reference, everybody. So please tell us, how has the show been for you this weekend? You know, out of all the years I've been coming, this one's actually been, believe it or not, considering everything that's happened in the country right now, this one's been absolutely phenomenal. I sold the majority of my stuff literally on Thursday. By, by close uh, uh, on Thursday, the first day of the show, um, we had already sold probably over 85% of our merchandise. Wow, that's fantastic. I offer you a giant congratulations on that. So for those who may not be uh, familiar with Frankenfab, like what, uh, what are your main uh, things that you like to make and uh, do? Well, basically, I, um, I deal in uh, startle scares is my biggest thing. We do these things called the big barrel blasters. And those of you who've been to the show, I promise you, you'll, you'll have remembered our booth um, because they explode. Um, yeah, I, I see. I've worked for quite a few years with with uh, Larry uh, over at the Darkness, so I help to maintain his animations, and I build stuff for Larry as well, Larry Kirchner, who owns the Darkness. And I've been uh, basically based here in St. Louis for the last five years, but I'm moving to Florida literally three days after the show. <laughs> so yes, our last moving truck to move us to Florida, so we're moving down to uh, Homosassa, Florida, but we still will be at Transworld every year. That's amazing. And so it seems, though, that the moving should be a little easier since you don't really have as much to take home after today, right? Well, we, we, we were actually stressing on that very point. We were kind of worried about truck space because we have so much equipment to move. And we're like, man, if this, uh, if this stuff doesn't sell as good as we hope it does, then we're going to have to make room for that. But obviously that's not the case, which we're more than grateful to the people. You know, they've, uh, they've really liked our product and um, we're, we're really happy that it went over so well. I, those of you who attended, who attended Transworld, thank you for being fantastic customers out there. And I got to tell you, I came by, the owners of my haunt were looking at everything, and so loud. It's amazingly loud, everything that you make here, along with uh, some of the great animations and use of fog. It's a fantastic stuff. Um, how, like, what is your biggest inspiration for uh, everything that you do? Uh, being, being in the industry, literally 30 years, and we've watched um, the industry change numerous times, um, and it's in, a, it's in its new flux, I guess as you would call it. Um, it's getting harder and harder, and those of you in the industry understand, it's getting harder to find actors. So we have to replace actors who we can't get to come on a regular basis um, with still enough of an experience. So the startle scare has been, uh, is being a new big, big part of the haunt industry. So knowing that, again, working at the darkness uh, all these years and owning my own haunts all the years, it's basically um, just kind of a common sense thing that you've got to start learning how to uh, scare people without having an actor. And a a really nothing really beats a really good startle scare and a misdirection scare. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, your stuff is going to cause startles. It startled me. It it's just fantastic. I can't say it enough. So um, where can people learn more about Frankenfab and, and uh, learn more about what you do and everything online or any online presence? Uh, no, we don't because I just custom build, but uh, you can get a hold of me on We Scare You, which is the, just the letter U, We Scare You at gmail.com. 
and uh, we can pretty much uh, build anything to spec. Um, again, not only did we sell out, but we've taken more orders. We can't even take any more orders. So we're absolutely grateful for everybody that have come to Transworld and supported us as well. Well, a giant congratulations to you again. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Ray. Have a fantastic weekend and a safe move to Florida. All right, Max. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you know what causes haunted attractions to shut down before they even get started? The top three roadblocks are lack of funding, lack of leadership, lack of resources. As a member of the Haunters Toolbox, you get instant access to the tools you need to start and grow your own haunted attraction business. To get started, become a member at HauntersToolbox.com. Hello everyone, Maximus here from the Trans World show floor, and I get to speak with who I feel like is a very unique vendor here at this event, Paul from Haunters Against Hate. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. It's the end of the Trans World show, so I'm pretty beat, but it's been a great show. Yeah, I... Uh, this is my first time here. I don't know if you knew that, but I've been just walking around starry-eyed and everything. It's It's been a lot of fun. Have you been? Have you had a chance to walk the floor at all? Only before it opens. Um, the booth has been so busy every day, so I've really had no chance to since I'm manning the booth by myself. I, I can attest to that because I've actually tried to swing by a couple times, and I don't know, there's always like six to ten people in here, and I'm like... You're busy, so, but congratulations on people coming by and swinging by and um, because I feel like you have a pretty important message or, you know, a, a pretty special reason for Haunters Against Hate existing. So can you give maybe uh, some background when you got started and uh, what's your story? Well, Haunters Against Hate started about five years ago, right after the Pulse Orlando massacre and some things were said on social media, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go into it too much, but... Um, Hunters Against Hate was formed and I started designing t-shirts. I created the Book of Haunters, um, pins, patches, and I go to haunts and have special Hunters Against Hate nights and with all the profits, I donate to LGBT youth organizations across the United States. That's fantastic. And so you've been doing this for about five years and how, so you, so you've grown into multiple um, Book of Haunters. What's a, can you tell people what the Book of Haunters is? Sure, there are six volumes and a Book of Clowns, and basically it's a coffee table book, hardbound, that features haunters around the world and their stories of how they got into the haunt industry and their experiences with the haunt industry. Volumes four, five, and six are specialized. Volume four was dedicated to black haunters, volume five, LGBT haunters, and the newest volume is dedicated to women haunters in the industry. That's fantastic. And so you've gotten a pretty great response from different actresses and actors and characters and everything. Volume six has been the fastest selling volume out of all the books. Um, the women haunters have exploded. In fact, it's been so popular. I'm getting ready to start a sequel, volume seven, called Wonderfully Wicked Women. Ooh, that sounds like something I would definitely like to see. But <laughs> so it's, um, and you actually have an event of your own coming up soon, don't you? I do. Um, on HAH, the event, it's happening July 30th through August 1st in Louisville, Kentucky at the Crown Plaza. And basically it's a combination of horror merchandise vendors, haunted house vendors, LGBT youth organizations all under one roof. Um, for an, a convention that's accepting of everyone with no judgment, I want everyone to feel comfortable. I'm having lots of the actors that have been featured in the books coming to it, so it's almost going to be like people signing yearbooks. Um, people are going to go around with their books and have these actors sign autographs. I'm having an award show from Haunters Against Hate, a Haunter of the Year award to a haunter who stood up to a very religious fanatic group at his haunt. I'm having a memorial award and I'm having a legacy award given to Lori Cardill, who was the star of George Romero's Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. So this is an event that people will purchase tickets for ahead of time online. Where can they maybe do that? You can go to HAHTheEvent.com and you can read all about it, the vendors that are going to be there, the seminars that are going to happen, the entertainment, 
and you can purchase tickets there, pre-order, um, offering VIP, full weekend passes. You can order your hotel room if need be. So everything H-A-H-TheEvent.com. So you have the ongoing uh, Book of Haunters going on. You have the event coming in January, uh, July 30th. And then we're going to get into the haunt season. Have you already started to line up uh, your uh, Haunters Against Hate nights at different haunts? No one has reached out yet. Generally, they'll start reaching out to me around August to start solidifying their dates so they have their schedules in, in plan and everything. But I can guarantee I will probably be at Nightmare in Edgewood. I will probably be at Fear Fair, um, Devil's Attic, Wicked World Scaregrounds. So. so when people may want to know the schedule when it's uh, finalized or when the nights are picked out, where would they go to find out about those? They can go to the Facebook page, Haunters Against Hate, or they can go to the Haunters Against Hate website, which is HauntersAgainstHate.com. Well, Paul, this is amazing work that you're doing and trying to create a space of acceptance for, you know, haunting brings so many different kinds of people. And I want haunted houses to be a place that they can come to, to scare, to find a haunt family. And I think you're, you know, pioneering that path forward to be sure that that's inclusive for everyone. So um, big congratulations to you and you know, I don't know how to say it enough for the amount of work you do. I, I, I hope it sounds cliche, but, you know, brings a warm feeling inside when, you know, you get special stories probably brought back to you. Well, I had a special story happen at Transworld this event where a father came up to me on Friday and he said he had purchased volume five, the LGBT Haunters book for his daughter. And he started crying and I was like, are you OK? And he's like, your book changed her life. She was able to come out to me when she saw that book. Wow. So it's pretty impactful that, you know, that's what Haunters Against Hate is all about, is being able to help these LGBT youth be accepting of themselves and not feel threatened. And a lot of them deal with bullying, and they, they, I want them to realize that they have people supporting them. Absolutely. And if I can quote a, uh, you know, an interesting Will Ferrell movie, my policy usually is ELE. Everybody love everybody. I that's, like it. I like it. That's, that's, that's how I want the haunt industry to be. So, you know, that's my goal. But congratulations again on your work and everything. So Facebook, online, everywhere, all the social medias. Right. Correct. Um, I have a Twitter feed. I don't use it that much. I'm on Instagram, Haunters Against Hate. But the big thing is Facebook and the two websites, HauntersAgainstHate.com and HAHTheEvent.com. Paul Lanner from Haunters Against Hate, thank you so much. My pleasure, truly. Hey everyone, Maximus here from the show at Transworld. It is the last day, Sunday, and I am getting to speak with vendors that I feel like created a lot of buzz this show. I'm speaking with Izzy and Andy from Dead Rabbit Studios. Ladies, how are you this morning? I'm good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So, Dead Rabbit Studios, how did you, uh, when did you all get started? It's an Andy question. Uh, no, Rob's been doing it for a couple years. I started with him in 2017, and he's basically, I he showed me how to do everything that's that we have today. Like, he taught me. So is everything I'm looking at made, hand, handmade by all of you? Handmade by all of us. Uh, I fiberglass all the masks. They uh, they sculpt them and paint them. And then the barrels are all foamed by all of us. They're painted by all of us. The, uh, between the, the, all the props are done by all of us. So. Oh, sorry. No, so what all, what all do you guys make? Uh, we make props, masks, costumes. We're, uh, we're known for our fiberglass masks. Um, and we're also known for our still costumes. So these, all these are still costumes over here. I think I've seen, I feel like I've seen those um, at a haunt or two. I'm pretty sure now that I'm looking at them. They, so you guys are just doing everything. And okay. we have a saying that if you don't have a stilt stalker at your haunt, you're not shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually is, we've used that to sell. People have come and be like, we want to be the shit. We want a stalker. <laughs> So if you want to be the shit, you need to find Dead Rabbit Studios. So, now, one thing, I feel like at every show, there's an item that you just see everybody walking around with. And I feel like that item came from you all this time around. Now, I can say what I think it is, but I want to hear from you all. Uh, 
I want to say probably the props are our biggest. We, we oh, there was one. Rob was outside. He caught a picture of someone walking with our not so happy mallet. And then yesterday, the other day, we were standing at the hotel and we had people with axes, barrels, bats. Yeah, we offer bags. No one wanted a bag. <laughs> they all wanted to carry it around. Which is fine by us. Display it out a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, I, I do believe that it was definitely the mallets and the weapons. Like, everybody was just walking around with them like, what is happening? And and the uh, the one that had the broken in part with the pumpkin seeds in it. That's, that's my favorite. That was a happy mistake, actually. We we made them solid like the rest of them are, and then the foam didn't set in one, so we cut it out and we went with it, and now it's our biggest seller. See, I saw it, and I thought it would be perfect because I have a character called the Pumpkin Smasher that I do at my haunt. And then I thought, oh, my God, that's amazing. And then as soon as I got over here, you all was sold out. They went in like the first hour, I think. Yeah, the first hour, we didn't have any left, and it's actually called our smashed pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> See, it would have been perfect. Some of the vendors run us dry before even the attendees could get us in. <laughs> well, that is fantastic. I think you guys have had a wonderful response at this show. So masks, still uh, costumes, weapons of all different kinds. It's like, how, how have you felt like the show has gone for you overall? Pretty good. I mean, we've actually had time to relax because uh, we only have a few things left, so we kind of just sit there and people pick up what's left. <laughs> a lot less to take home, right? That was the goal. So we, it, it actually went better than expected. So it's it's a good feeling to have somebody come in and go, well, this, this shit's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this shit is pretty amazing at Dead Rabbit Studios. So um, if people wanted to see more of your stuff or see you online, where can they uh, where can they find you? Uh, we have a website, DeadRabbitStudios.com. We do Instagram, Dead Rabbit Studios, and Facebook, Dead Rabbit Studios. And Facebook. Um, we love using Instagram, and we love when people tag us in their, like with them using our stuff. And we even saw someone um, get a tattoo of one of our masks yesterday, and so that was really cool. So we really Somebody like tattooed your mask? It's yeah. his character, and he, he loves the mask, and he got it tattooed on his arm, and it's a pretty awesome feeling yeah, to it's have. really cool your work displayed like that so. well you have been immortalized on someone's skin with your masks and everything i do i do believe that you guys are amazing and the reason i wanted to talk to you is because i've been following you on instagram and you guys are very active on there and it's been wonderful to see i know it was a long trip here hopefully a very much easier trip back congratulations on your success and thank you for speaking with me of course it's, it's been a great show we can't wait to come back next year hopefully bigger and better yep Yep, our goal is always to go bigger. Last year we were probably about a third of the size, and I think, you know, three times the people know who Dead Rabbit is now, so that's pretty cool too. Can I ask where the name comes from? Uh, yeah, you got that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed. Can, Rob, can I say where your Dead Rabbit name came from? <laughs> Rob has a daughter, and he would get her bunny rabbit for Easter, and it ended up dead <laughs> Easter morning. And she said that that's how he should name it, and because it's not the first time it happened. <laughs> He's killed a lot of rabbits. <laughs> not purposely. Oh, no. Not purposely. They're all accidents. But yes, that's that's how it happened. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at our logo, it's the two rabbits, and then in the middle of it is a skull face. So. <laughs> oh, it is. I didn't even notice that at first. <laughs> that's. I love hearing stories like that so much. Izzy, Andy, thank you so much for speaking with me, and good luck to you for the rest of the year and onward at any future shows. Thank you so much. It was thank great you. talking great. to you. So if you, think, if you think Maximus did a good job, too, look him up on Facebook. It's Maximus Bryant. He's been a home haunter since 2012 at Fright on Fountain, his backyard haunt in Springfield, Ohio, Fright on Fountain. He also acts at the Dent Schoolhouse in Cincinnati, Ohio, you can find more about it on FrightSite.com and, of course, all the socials. He's also involved in the Ohio Haunters Association, and they have a Facebook group as well. Thanks again, Max. This podcast episode sponsored by Scarret Badges. Get your Scarret Badges at ScareBadges.com. Also sponsored by Haunters Toolbox. Take your haunt to the next level at HauntersToolbox.com. Thank you for listening to Haunt Topic Radio. Please leave a comment wherever you found this podcast. Each comment you leave will help spread the word to other haunters around the world. See you next next time. time.
Hey everyone, Maximus here on the trans floor. Ah, oh, we're gonna. Hey everyone, Maximus here from the show floor of Trans World Day Three. And one thing about me, oh my God, that pole is running away. <laughs> uh, take, take two.